Joining us now, the host of Sports Talk Mississippi, Richard Cross. Hey there, Richard. What's happening? Gerard, happy Monday. Good to see you. <laughs> did uh, did you put a helmet on when all that was going on? <laughs> no helmet. No helmet. No helmet. I just uh, kind of like the Ole Miss team. I eased out onto the field. You know, it really is strange. So, so, so I go to midfield for the coin. Yeah. And that's my favorite yeah. thing about the job, uh, about being okay. the sideline reporter. I get to walk out into the middle of the football field right before the game starts. And I made a conscious effort Saturday night to take a look around because it was an unbelievable environment. Yeah. Once the game starts, I'm on the sideline and, and kind of stay on the sideline. Sometimes I'll go around behind the end zone. So it was a pretty strange deal to, with a minute left on the clock in the fourth quarter, just for, I don't know, 15 minutes, be standing out at the hash marks, just kind of <laughs> watching the crowd make I'm sure there's not a bottle that's uh, that's heading for me or, or somebody else. And what a what an incredible, weird, strange scene. You know, when when you've been around SEC football for a while, you get to the point where you think you've seen just about everything, except for the fact that you haven't. There's always something else, and, uh, and we certainly saw that something else on Saturday night. Well, on our video feed, we got uh, we got three panes, three windows going up, and one of those, as you can see, features uh, those last few moments there of the game when all the, the melee was ensuing, uh, and we probably will see the coach, Coach Kiffin, getting pelted with a yellow golf ball. I'm still trying to understand who brings golf balls into a stadium. Do you think that was intentional to throw it at somebody? Surely not. I mean, I don't know if somebody somebody went to the ballpark ballpark with the idea of, hey, I'm going to take this golf ball, and if I get a chance, I'm going to bean one or launch one at Lane (laughs) Kiffin's head and just see how good my aim is. is. I mean, I would like to think that somebody went and got uh, got, a beautiful day in Knoxville. Uh, Maybe they got 18 in before lunchtime and forgot that there was a golf ball. But who really plays golf with a yellow ball? I mean, I know it's a thing. It just stops. Well, I don't, but those in my group do. As you get older, Richard, you'll find your eyesight starts to falter a bit. But I will say this, when you're playing this time of year and the leaves are falling, uh, especially where I play where the rough is rather high, when those leaves are situated in a certain uh, position, and the sun is beaming down on them, as was the case this weekend. Every leaf looks like a white golf ball. So that You're that's right. the benefit of the yellow. Um, but I I try to stay away from life, it. Life, Gerard, there's little in life on the golf course that is more frustrating. When you hit a good enough shot, maybe you don't hit it right down the gut in the middle of the field. Yeah. When you hit a good enough shot that you know that ball landed right there, it should be yep. there, but you can't find it because of the leaf. So I've been a yep. bit of the doubt on the yellow golf ball. I, uh, I get it. <laughs> well, so – the obvious question for you, sir, since you were on the sidelines, did you get hit with anything? I did. I did. Uh, in fact, uh, was, in fact uh, was, was uh, we were on the air. We never went to a break during that, just trying to kind of chronicle the scene. And I got hit in the arm with a water bottle. I mean, it was fine. I had a, had a jacket on, and I think it was one that didn't have a lid on it, but, you know, it was about half or three-quarters full, and it, it didn't hit on the end of the bottle. But, I mean, yeah, that's okay. But that's a, it's really an unsafe scene. And to me, the thing, and, and I said this on our broadcast, we, we spent four hours – on Saturday night, because it was a long football game. Honestly, six hours, if you want to go back to the start of the pregame show, talking about how great an environment was. The stadium looked fantastic with the the checkerboard effect that they did in the stands. Those fans were amped up. It was full almost to the gills. I mean, 102,000 and change, and and there were legitimately 100,000 people in the stadium, even with the scattered empties that you have, regardless of, of how big the game is. They were into it. The band's great. The fans were great. It was a fantastic environment for a college football game. But they went too far. I mean, the Tennessee yeah. fans came with, with one thing on their mind, and that was affecting the outcome of the game. Not, not necessarily. They didn't go into the game saying, we're going to throw a bunch of stuff on the field, but they came into the game the way great fan bases do, saying, we're going to affect the outcome of the game. We're going to be the, the 12th man, if you will. Mm-hmm. And they played that role well, but then it went to a, a different level. And I'm, I'm a little frustrated isn't the right word. It's just kind of roll your eyes. When you when you read the statements from 
from Danny White. And I thought a lot of what his statement said was good. But when you start saying a few fans or several fans were throwing things, I, I don't know what your definition of a few or several is, but it certainly was well into the hundreds, if not into the thousands of people. And, and it wasn't just that people threw stuff on the field. It continued. I mean, it, for, for 15 minutes, you had this, like, just constant barrage of stuff coming onto the field. You know, I, I've heard people talking about when they went through the uh, the cleanup pile, it was water bottles, it was alcohol bottles, it was beer cans that were half full or empty or completely full, it was vape pens, they found screws, they obviously found some golf balls that made their way to the stadium. I'm told that they're whistles, which actually might explain a play earlier in the game that was a little strange. Hmm. Anything hmm. they could find, pizza boxes, and it was... Look, the majority of it was coming from the student section. Uh, there's yeah. no question about that. But it was not isolated to the student section either. You had you, you had grown folks that ought to know better, and, and I'm not saying the students shouldn't know better as well, who are just cascading stuff. And it, it got to a tipping point. And to me, the bigger issue, and, and you may or may not agree with me on this, it, it's not just throwing objects onto the field. It's where we are culturally with a mob mentality. And no, I agree. That's a little scary. I mean, they, they at one point evacuated the bottom 20 rows of the student section, and then just as the game was about to start, it was this mad rush for the people that were, you know, 20, 30 rows up coming down to field level. I had the director of security say to me, I was standing just behind the end zone for the last couple of plays of the game. He said, and I had met him earlier in the night, he said, Richard, he said, if Tennessee wins this game, you better get out of the way. He said, because somebody's going to get hurt. The, the security personnel on the field knew that if Tennessee won that game, all of that pinup frustration was coming onto the field in form of people. It wasn't going to be in form of bottles and whatever else they were throwing. It was going to be people coming onto the field and a situation that probably would have become even more unsafe than it was for that 20-minute delay that we had. Yeah, I, I just think a couple of weeks ago, uh, A&M in Alabama. Uh, was it incredible yeah. the way they they emptied onto the field and and of course we've seen it in Oxford they've seen it everywhere it, it, so this is a comment yeah. I made Richard when when you talk about because I agree with you it's there there's something I think going on in our country from a cultural perspective let's be honest this isn't unique to Tennessee this incident was this could happen at any stadium in America. It, it, could, it, it could, and, and it has, and but it, it hasn't happened to this happened. level, Gerard. This, this I is agree. A different, level, a different level. It had a European soccer feel to it from the, the early 90s. You remember seeing those videos where they ultimately put fences up to keep people from coming off the field. Yeah, yep. you know, remember that. Really fortunate. And, and, and I'm not being flippant when I say this. We're really, really fortunate that somebody was not seriously injured. And I'm not even talking about a football player. I'm talking about somebody that's sitting in the stands where you've got stuff that's flying out of the upper deck in the direction of the field. You, you get hit with a glass bottle or, or a, a three-quarter full 16-ounce tall boy that's coming from 250 feet behind you in the back of the head. You, you could be looking at somebody that had been seriously injured. And, and it's easy to make light of this and go, oh, well, it was just, you know, out of control and it was Lane Kiffin. That's no excuse. And it was a, 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 a great night and a great scene in Knoxville turned into an embarrassment for the University of Tennessee. It turned into an embarrassment for the SEC. And it turned into an embarrassment for college football. And, and I'm, not trying to, I, I'm not trying to overplay it. It was ugly at the end. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I'm just saying that I, I feel like we're at this point in this country, and to some extent it's manifesting its way in, into sports, this in, entitlementitis attitude where we're entitled to win. And and so uh, to me it just looked like, well, dang it, looks like we're not going to, and i got to get a pound of flesh somehow. Here's a water bottle and a mustard bottle and a golf ball. And uh, I don't know, it just the, the way that – critical call what they spent it seemed like an eternity reviewing it because they had to get it right uh it's it is a sad situation that i think will have ramifications in a lot of different ways throughout the realm of college sports and it it is a it's a stain on tennessee at this point it happened there by them so we'll and see what happens a strong statement from the sec commissioner a strong statement from the Saw university it. of tennessee president that's all well and yeah. good what are you going to do to back up a strong yeah. statement What's the punishment going to be? I guess that's the next shoe to drop. Totally agree. 
Rich, appreciate you coming on. Glad you were safe, and we got a big one coming up uh, this weekend. We'll see you up there. No doubt. No doubt.